Hi there! Did you know that the entire universe is made up of matter and energy? All matter is made up of elements that cannot be broken down by chemical activity. Atoms are the building blocks of everything in this universe, including ourselves. The atom is the smallest unit of an element that can exist either alone or in combination with atoms of the same or different elements. It is the smallest unit of matter that retains the identity of a substance. A molecule can be defined as the combination of two or more atoms which are held together by chemical bonds. A molecule is the smallest portion of a substance which showcases all the properties of the substance. Greek philosophers Leucippus and Democritus proposed earliest concept that a smallest particle of matter is an atom that is indivisible. Democritus coined the term atomos to describe the indivisibility of an atom. John Dalton proposed the atomic theory of matter in 1803. He pictured the atom as a solid, indestructible sphere with a mass like a billiard ball. Dalton's atomic theory states that matter is made up of very small, invisible, and indivisible particles called atoms. Atoms of the same element have the same properties. Atoms of different elements differ in properties. Atoms cannot be created nor destroyed in any chemical reaction. Atoms combine with each other in whole number ratios to produce compounds. Dalton's atomic theory gave explanations to the fundamental laws in chemistry. These are the law of conservation of mass, the law of definite proportion, and the law of multiple proportions. The cathode ray experiments in 1897 of various scientists, including Joseph John Thomson, led to the discovery of the electron. Thomson proposed the plum pudding model. He found that atoms could sometimes eject a far smaller negative particle, which he called an electron. His discovery showed that atoms were not indivisible, but composed of subatomic particles that are electrically charged. He believed that an atom is a big positive sphere where negatively charged electrons are scattered throughout. In 1911, Ernest Rutherford discovered the nucleus of the atom using his alpha scattering experiment. He and his colleagues tested Thomson's theory using a very thin sheet of gold foil. They focused on a stream of alpha particles, and they discovered that most of the particles passed through and few were deflected or scattered at a wide angle, some were deflected at very large angles, and there were some that bounced back to the source. After Rutherford's discovery, James Chadwick found a neutral particle with no net electrical charge inside the nucleus and called this particle the neutron. Niels Bohr proposed an atomic model similar to the solar system where electrons are found revolving around the nucleus. Electrons are found in specific energy levels where they can move from one energy level to another by absorbing or releasing energy. An Austrian physicist Erwin Schrödinger made a refinement of Bohr's atomic model. He used mathematical equations to describe the possibility of finding an electron in a certain location. This model of the atom made use of electron clouds as probable position of the electrons. Imagine an electric fan with its blades spinning at high speeds. This was how the surface of the electrons may appear. This model is known as the quantum mechanical model of the atom. Advanced ideas of the modern atom include the following. Electrons of atoms are found in specific quantized energy levels. Electrons are not stationary, but continuously move outside the atomic nucleus. Electrons occupy specific atomic orbitals. Atoms are composed of two regions. The nucleus is the center of the atom that contains the mass of the atom. This is where protons and neutrons are located. 
The electron cloud is the region that surrounds the nucleus that contains most of the space in the atom. A typical atom consists of three subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons. The electron is the lightest of all the three subatomic particles. It carries a net charge of negative one and is represented by the symbol E with a negative superscript. It is located outside the nucleus. A proton carries one positive charge and is represented by the symbol P with a positive superscript. It is located inside a nucleus. The neutron has no net electrical charges. It is represented by the symbol N with a zero superscript. It is located inside the nucleus. The atomic number and mass number of an element are given in the periodic table of elements. The mass number is the atomic weight or atomic mass rounded off to a whole number. The mass of an atom is influenced by the mass of the nucleus. Thus, the mass number is equal to the mass of protons and neutrons. The atomic mass is measured in atomic mass units. The atomic number is the number of protons of an element. It can be used to identify the atom. An element is a neutral atom. Therefore, an element has an equal number of protons and electrons. The following formulas will help you remember how to get the number of subatomic particles of an element. Atomic number equals number of electrons equals number of protons. Mass number equals number of protons plus number of neutrons. Number of neutrons equals mass number minus number of protons, where the capital Z is the atomic number. The capital A is for the mass number. E with a negative superscript is for the number of electrons. P with a positive superscript is for the number of protons. And N with a zero superscript is for the number of neutrons. To get the mass number, round off the atomic mass to the nearest whole number. For helium, the mass number is four atomic mass units. To get the number of protons and electrons, remember the formula, atomic number equals number of electrons equals number of protons. Thus, helium has two electrons and two protons. To get the number of neutrons, get the difference between the mass number and number of protons. To get helium's number of neutrons, we subtract four, which is the mass number, to two, which is the number of protons. Therefore, helium has two neutrons. Let's try solving for the number of protons, number of electrons, and number of neutrons in a particular atom. How many protons, electrons, and neutrons are there in a sodium atom? The symbol of sodium designates an atom that has a mass number of 23 and an atomic number of 11. The number of protons in an atom of sodium is 11. The number of electrons is also equal to 11. The number of neutrons in the nucleus is equal to the mass number minus the number of protons, or 23 minus 11, which is 12. An atom is electrically neutral. It has neither a positive or a negative charge. In order for an atom to be neutral, the number of electrons must equal the number of protons. Atoms, however, can sometimes give off or gain some electrons. If this happens, the atom becomes electrically charged. The process in which an atom loses or gains electrons is called ionization. When an atom does not have the same number of protons and electrons, an ion is formed. When an atom loses or gains one or more electrons, it acquires a net electrical charge and it is called an ion. For example, a neutral magnesium atom has 12 protons and 12 electrons. If the magnesium atom loses two electrons, it will have a net electrical charge of positive two. To find the net charge of an ion, subtract the number of protons to the number of electrons. In this case, the net charge is equal to 12 which is the number of protons, 
minus 10, which is the number of electrons, since it lost two electrons. Therefore, a magnesium ion has a net electrical charge of positive 2. A magnesium ion is represented with a symbol of magnesium with a charge of positive 2. A positive ion is called a cation. When an atom loses an electron to another atom, there is an imbalance in the number of protons and electrons in an atom. When this happens, the number of protons become greater than the number of electrons. Hence, the atom becomes positively charged. A negative ion is called an anion. When an atom gains an electron given up by another atom, an increase of negative particles happens for that atom. When this happens, the number of protons is less than the number of electrons in the particle. The atom that has accepted the electron during chemical combination becomes negatively charged. An atom that gains extra electrons will have the same mass number and atomic number as the ion that was formed. All atoms of the same element have the same atomic number. That means they have the same number of protons. However, atoms do not necessarily have the same number of neutrons. Atoms with the same number of electrons and protons, but different number of neutrons, are called isotopes. Isotopes are atoms of the same element, with different mass numbers. The presence of isotopes disproved one of Dalton's postulates in his atomic theory, which states that all the atoms of the same element have the same properties. Two atoms are not alike if they have different mass numbers. If the isotopes of an element have the same number of electrons, then they will have the same chemical properties. The chemical characteristics of a given atom depend only on the number of electrons in the atom, and not the number of neutrons. However, isotopes of an element have slightly different physical properties. The slight variation in their physical properties is due to the small difference in their relative masses. Most elements have at least two or three isotopes. For example, Hydrogen has three known isotopes, protium, deuterium, and tritium, which are symbolized as hydrogen-1, hydrogen-2, and hydrogen-3, the atomic masses of which are one atomic mass unit, two atomic mass units, and three atomic mass units respectively. Protium has one proton with no neutron. Deuterium has one proton and one neutron. Tritium has one proton and two neutrons. In these three isotopes, take note that they all have one proton. This is the atomic number identified for the hydrogen atom. Now let's wrap things up. An atom consists of three subatomic particles called protons, electrons, and neutrons. Electrons are negatively charged particles found outside the nucleus. Protons are positively charged particles found inside the nucleus, while neutrons are electrically neutral and are located in the nucleus of the atom. An atom is identified by two numbers, the atomic number and the mass number. The atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus of the atom. The mass number represents the sum of the protons and neutrons in the nucleus of the atom. The process in which an atom loses or gains electrons is called ionization. When an atom loses or gains one or more electrons, it acquires a net electrical charge and it is called an ion. A positive ion is called a cation. A negative ion is called an anion. Isotopes are atoms of the same elements with different mass numbers. That's all for now! We will be discussing about how to use the periodic table to predict the chemical behavior of an element in our next video, so stay tuned! See you on our next video, and don't forget to keep your minds busy! If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification icon for more videos like this.